Welcome back. Uh, if you remember from the last video, uh, we ended up with a little bit of a matrix. We had a matrix with two columns, A and B, uh, and three rows, and it looked a little like this. So uh, I mentioned also last time, we're not gonna be working most of the time with matrices. We're gonna be working with a type of data called data frames. Uh, this is a primary data type in R that you would use when you're doing most kinds of econometric analysis. Uh, there's another version that you might end up using called a tibble, uh, but uh, we're going to address that in the more advanced parts of the videos. So we're going to go ahead and start with data frames. So what is a data frame? A data frame is basically a matrix. It's a matrix of numbers, but it's got a couple of extra details on it that make it easier to work with when you're doing data work. So let's go ahead and start ourselves by giving ourselves a data frame to work with. How can we get a data frame? Well, we can just take our matrix X and turn it into a data frame. Why not? So I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to do use the as data frame, just like we've been using as before. I'm going to stick X into it and say, hey, give me X as a data frame. And I'm going to go ahead and just replace X uh, with that data frame version of itself. So if I run that, you can see that X up here changed a little bit. It used to say, hey, it's a matrix. It's got three rows. It's got two columns. Now it doesn't have rows and columns anymore. It's got observations, rows, and variables columns, right? So this is basically still a matrix, except it's now recognizing that it's not just any matrix, it's a data matrix, okay? So we're getting into data. Uh, if I click on this, it will show me the exact same thing that I had before. No big surprise. Uh, but also now it's got this little, this little dropper down. If I click the dropper down, it'll say, hey, you got two variables in here. Uh, you got A. A is a number, a numerical variable. It goes one, four, three. You got B. B is also a numerical variable. It goes four, five, six. I can also put some character variables in here as well. Maybe we'll do that in a minute. Um, but uh, so now we have a data frame. So what's so great about a data frame? What can we actually do with a data frame? Uh, so one nice thing about data frames is that they make it a lot easier to work with the variables. Can't forget my comments here. So with a data frame, we don't have to do quite as much of the indexing that we did before, which is nice because that stuff can get a little bit complex. Instead, we can use the dollar sign operator to select the variables. Now that R knows that it's not just any old matrix, it's a data matrix, each of the columns has a special meaning as being a variable. So let's go ahead and make it easier to select those variables. So last time, for example, I had to say something like if I wanted to get back the rows, that were where A was less than four, I had to do something complex. I said, okay, you know, uh, give me X where uh, you know the first column of x is less than four and that gave me a true false and then I plugged that into my rows section oops and that gave me back those those rows right there and I can still do that but I don't have to do it anymore this time I can do the same thing by saying x dollar sign a and you'll notice first of all it popped up this list this is the list of variables that I can choose between which is very convenient right I don't have to remember all the names of the variables it our studio will remember it for me a is what I want, and that being less than four. And this will give me the exact same result as when I selected the first column. Right? This is a lot easier. I don't have to remember what number each uh, of column each variable is. Right? I can just use the name of the variable, which is nice, right? because variables have names. That's how we remember them. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and so I've got this data frame. Uh, and I can do all the same sorts of indexing that I can do with it. In particular, right? let's say I want the second element of a. When I use this dollar sign, it really is giving me back that a vector, right? It's saying, hey, I got this x data set. I got this x data frame. I'm selecting the dollar sign, this a variable out of it. Now I'm looking at a. I'm looking at a. It's the object in my hands. I can do whatever I want with it. And I, I want to look at the second element of it. Give me back that four. There's the four once again, right? So I can use indexing in the same way, right? So uh, I've got my data, uh, my data frame. And uh, let's go ahead, and, and, and one thing nice thing about data frames is that you can store multiple different kinds of data in it. And so let me go ahead and just create a new variable in my data frame. So let's say, all right, well, I got A and B. The next one's C. So let's X dollar sign C. I'm just going to create a new variable C. I'm going to stick inside of it. I'm going to use C to create a vector. Uh, let's say uh, hello, um, goodbye, and uh, farewell. Now I've got three variables in my data frame. I've got A, B, and I've got C, which is a character variable, right? It's got hello, goodbye, and farewell. Uh, if I want to get back the, the farewell part, 
I can, uh, of course, do uh, give me back farewell. I can choose the variable C, and I can say, hey, give me the third element of that. And that'll give me back the farewell that I wanted. What if I want, say, the third row of, 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 uh, of X? I can do the indexing the same way that I did before. Um, look at first row of data, right? So I can say, hey, uh, X, give me that first row and all the columns, and it'll give me one for A, four for B, and hello for C, because that's all the stuff that's on the first row. I can, of course, click on it right here, and you can see that's exactly what it should be giving me back. Uh, one nice thing about data frames, again, also is that you can look at them at, that, at a glance. One thing that I recommend doing is, first of all, of course, looking at the data directly by clicking on it in the environment. It'll pop up right here. You can also use the head function. Uh, head will show you sort of all the data at a glance. Look, and it sort of, sort of, sort of show you the first six rows of data. Here we've got fewer than six rows. Um, top of data with head. That will show me basically all the data that I have. But if I had a whole bunch of rows, it would only show me the first six. The benefit of that being I would then know sort of what the data looks like, which is nice. It's always good to look at your data as much as possible when you're working with it so you know what it looks like. So this is sort of our toy data. We've been messing with it. Let's go ahead and bring in an actual data set. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do it with the read command. So what I've done is I've stored in this folder right here accounting data. It's just an account, some accounting data. It's got some basic data from a couple of companies uh, and some of their uh, different accounting numbers. Uh, and so let's go ahead and make sure that I'm in the working directory that I want to be. So I'm going to do set working directory. I'm going to choose a directory. I'm going to go ahead and navigate to that folder that I want to be in. That's the actual folder that I'm interested in. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to I'm going to bring in that new data set. So I'm going to bring in new data, okay? I'm gonna do it with the read function. So read.csv, because this is a CSV file that I have right here. CSV is sort of a basic version of spreadsheet data uh, where you separate the columns with commas and then you go to the next line to go to the next row. It's, you know, whatever you're given. In this case, you've been given a CSV file, so that's great. Uh, so I'm just gonna put in the name of that file, which is accountingdata.csv. Now, quiz yourself. What's going to happen if I run this command right now? You might think, oh, it's going to bring that data in. But no, that's not what it's going to do. Remember? Uh, all this is saying is that read this in. It's not saying to store it anywhere, right? We always have to store it in some sort of object if we want it to stick around. Otherwise, it's just going to sort of pop in and pop out, right? In fact, if I do this, it's going to read all the data out to me until it gets tired of reading data to me. And then uh, it's not anywhere over here because it didn't store it anywhere. So what I need to do to store it is I need to say, ah, I want to store it in a new data set. Let's call it uh, accounting data, right? I'm use my little arrow. So now I've read it in. I've got accounting. I've got 460 observations. I got six variables. I can click on it to look at it, right? So I got, uh, I got the year of the data. I got the firm's name. Uh, I got this, which has some NAs in it, which means missing data. We'll talk about that later. Uh, we got three different variables with some numbers in it. We've got BV, DIV, and EPS. Uh, this is book value, dividends per share, uh, earnings per share. Don't worry about it, it's there. That's the point. We can evaluate this in the same way. We can use uh, dollar signs to get at the variable. So let's say uh, we want to look at the uh, third row of the DIV variable. Right? I can say in this data set, act data, notice that it helped me finish that command right there, dollar sign to select the variables. I'll just go ahead and, and I won't even type it in. I'm gonna scroll down to DIV, I'm gonna click enter, there it goes, and give me the third row of that vector. Notice I don't have to do the, uh, the two different numbers, right? Because a, the act data is a, is, a, is a data frame and it needs a row and a number, but act data dollar sign div is just that one variable, that's just one vector. So I only need the third element of it, right? And it's giving me, oh, it's a zero. And look, it's a factor variable, right? So it's showing me the different levels of this variable, right? Okay, so that's good. Uh, okay, but uh, uh, how about if I want to, let's do, let's do the subsetting. Let's say I want to just look at one of these companies. Show me all the data from, let's say, this ATB company, okay? How can I do that? I'm going to do it with my indexing just again. Show me a, what was it, ACB, ATB, ATB. So I'm going to say act data. Okay, I'm going to do my indexing. Uh, so in the rows section, I want you to give me all of the, of the rows where the firm is ATB. So I'm looking for the firm variable to be equal to ATB. So I want uh, act data, dollar sign firm, right? That's the variable. I want it to be equal to ATB. 
B. And then I want all the columns. So what's this doing? So this, of course, is going to say, OK, look at act data. Give me the firm variable from that data set. Great, now I'm working with just the firm variable. That's a vector. Check every single one of those to see if it's equal to ATB. If it is, give me true. If it's not, give me false. Then I'm feeding this in to the rows part of my index of my indexing. So it's going to give me back all the rows where that's true, where that, in, where that is, where firm is equal to ATB. So if I do this, boom, it'll give me back all the rows where the firm is equal to ATB right there. I can also just go ahead and look at the head of data. If I do head act data, it'll give me those first couple of rows, right? Which just happen to also be the ATB rows. So I can get a good look at what the data looks like. All right. So that's the basics of data frames. We'll be working with these a lot. Uh, they're basically just matrices that are easier to work with. We can use that dollar sign to get at the variable names or at the variable names. And hey, one last thing about data frames. We can change the name of those names if we feel like it. Let's go ahead and uh, change the name of um, one of the variables, right? Well, I can do that with the names function. If I just say names act data, it'll tell me the names of the variables, year, firm, market value, book value, dividends per share, earnings per share. If I want to change one of those, I can do it exactly like I would with anything else, right? Uh, so let's say I want to take the, uh, the div variable, or the div variable, and change it to dividends. So that's the one, two, three, four, five, fifth element of that. Okay, and I want to shove something else in the fifth element of that, dividends. Well, what do I get now if I do names act data? Now, that fifth element is dividends because I took di the word dividends and I shoved it in to the fifth element of the names vector. So now the fifth element of the names vector says dividends. So now the name of the variable is dividends. So if I want to uh, look at the third row of the div variable again, this time it'll be act data dollar sign dividends three. There we go. All right, that's the basics of data frames, uh, which we'll continue to be working. We we will continue to be working with as we go on. Uh, so get yourself used to them. Uh, use those use that dollar sign to select those columns, and you'll be good to go. Thank you.